In this lesson on trigonometry, we're going to have a look at questions that require a triangle sketch. In the first two lessons on grade 12 trigonometry, we got to know the new identities for compound angles and double angles. In the next few lessons, we're going to have a look at where we can apply these identities. Example 1. If 5 tan theta minus 12 is equal to 0, with theta being between 180 and 360 degrees, and 5 cos alpha is equal to minus 3, with sin alpha bigger than 0, determine the value of the following without the use of a calculator and with the aid of a diagram. Now, when you read without the use of a calculator, you should already have in mind your 30, 45 and 60 degree triangles. And here they also add with the aid of a diagram, which implies that you will have to draw your own triangle. And this will do by using the information that was given. And we have two parts of information. The first part of information is about theta and the second part about alpha. So we're going to start with the information about theta. Now, because we want to draw a triangle, we will need side lengths. And therefore, we need to get the tan theta, the trig function alone here, so that we can have a ratio that we can use for these side lengths. So to get tan theta alone, I'm going to add the 12 and then divide by 5 on the other side. Now, this ratio is clearly a positive ratio. And that means we are going to work in the quadrants where tan is positive, And that is the first and the third quadrant. Then our second part of information about theta says that theta is an angle between 180 and 360 degrees. And that means that the first quadrant is now eliminated because that's between 0 and 90 degrees. And that means that we will draw our triangle in the third quadrant. When you draw your triangle, you always draw from the origin into the correct quadrant. And then you complete the triangle towards the x-axis. And then it's important to always indicate the angle, and the angle is measured from 0 degrees right up to the hypotenuse, and in this case, that angle is theta. Next, we're going to have to add our side lengths, and for that we're going back to our ratio of tan theta, and tan is opposite over adjacent. So our opposite side is 12, and our adjacent side is 5. But now we need to be careful and realize that both of them are on the negative parts of the axis. So it will be minus 5 and minus 12. If we go and add those two minuses in our ratio, they will be divided and give us the original plus. Now we need to get our hypotenuse side length. And for that, we're going to use Pythagoras. So finally, we can add our hypotenuse then and say that it is a length of 13, and the hypotenuse will always be a positive length or a positive distance. Next, we're going to move to our information we got about the alpha angle. So in our alpha angle, we have 5 cos alpha is equal to minus 3. And once again, we start off getting the ratio on its own. So cos alpha will be a ratio of minus 3 over 5. So this time we are working in a quadrant where cos has a negative ratio and that will be the second or the third quadrant. The second part of information then says we also need to work where sin of alpha is bigger than zero. Now bigger than zero means positive. So where sin is positive, that is then either the first or the second quadrant. And now the only quadrant that satisfies both parts of information is our second quadrant. So again, we go and draw in our second quadrant and we indicate our angle from zero degrees up to the hypotenuse. And this time it's alpha. And now we need to go and add our side lengths again. So we go back to our cos alpha ratio and cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So our adjacent side is minus three our hypotenuse is 5, and then with Pythagoras we can add our opposite side will be 4. So before we even had a look at the question, we used our information to draw two necessary triangles. And now we can move on to using these two triangles and our identities that we already know to answer the questions. 
In question A, we are asked to calculate the sin ratio of theta plus alpha. We only have triangles for theta and alpha separately, so we are going to use our new identity to break this up into sin of the first angle multiplied by cos of the second angle plus cos of the first angle multiplied by sin of the second angle. And now we can use our two triangles. So we're going to use the blue triangle to get the ratio of sin theta and cos theta. And then the green triangle to get cos alpha and sin alpha's ratio. So if we start in our blue triangle, sin is opposite over hypotenuse. So that will be minus 12 over 13. And cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. If we then move to our green triangle, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse again, and sin is opposite over hypotenuse. And now all we need to do is simplify, and then we have our ratio for sin of theta plus alpha as 16 over 65. If we now have a look at question B, once again we have cos of theta plus alpha, but we only have triangles for alpha and theta separately, so we're going to use our compound angle identity to break this up into cos of the first angle multiplied by cos of the second angle minus sin of the first angle multiplied by sin of the second angle. And once again, we're going to use the blue triangle to get the ratios in terms of theta and our green triangle to get the ratios in terms of alpha. And then we have our cos ratio for theta plus alpha, and that is 63 over 65. In C, we are asked to get the ratio of sin 2 alpha. And once again, all we need to realize is, is that we have a triangle only for alpha, and we're going to use our double angle identity to change this into 2 sin of only alpha, multiplied by cos of alpha. And then for sin alpha and cos alpha, we can read the ratio from our triangle, and this time it will be the green triangle. And then we can simply calculate that as minus 24 over 25. In D, we are asked for the ratio of cos to alpha. For cos, we know that we have three options for the double angle identity, and it doesn't matter which one you choose to use here. I'm going to choose to use the one where it changes to 2 cos squared of the single angle minus 1. And then for cos of alpha, I'm now going to use my triangle. So I put it in a bracket with the square on the outside. And cos alpha is then minus 3 over 5. And when I calculate this, I can square first. So then I get... 9 over 25 in the bracket, which I'm still going to multiply by 2 and then subtract 1 to get minus 7 over 25. 